You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Time, weather, and... Welcome back to the Rachel LaForce Show. If this is your first time listening, uh, I'm Rachel LaForce, and this is my show. This is a spiritual podcast from me, a comedian, uh, designated for folks who, quote unquote, aren't spiritual. What does that mean? This is a podcast where maybe you are going through a breakup, you're seeking something new, you had a spiritual awakening, shit is getting wild. Uh, And that means you are absolutely in the right place. Uh, Maybe you are a healer and you're like, you know what, this work is exhausting. I'm taking myself too seriously. You are exactly in the right place. Somebody suggested this to you and you're like, I have no idea what this woman is talking about. This podcast may be for you. Just try one episode. You know what I mean? You've got 30 minutes. Why not? That's what this podcast is all about. It is an interview podcast. Uh, A lot of times just me interviewing my own brain, being like, what's going on? So today is another solo episode. For those of you who don't know, I just had a beautiful newborn uh, baby, Teddy. He's a month old. So we're still rocking a lot of solo episodes so we can find our footing before we bring you some amazing interviews that are going to be coming up in the not so distant future. And I am just like, chef's kiss. So excited to bring that uh, to you. I have some very funny, like, some of my favorite uh, funny comedians that have agreed to talk to me, and I'm so excited. Uh, and then also a lot of people that are working within the coaching fields, healing, entrepreneurship, uh, creative arts, all of those things. So it's going to be a really fun late spring, early summer. So I'm really glad you're here. <sighs> How are we? What's going on? We are in the middle of eclipse season. Uh oh. Many of you are nodding your head as you're driving, being like, "Uh uh-huh, shit's getting weird. And some of you are like, I don't know what that means. Both things are right. Something else you should know about the show is a lot of times I like to utilize all tools and modalities available to us. So like I said, this is a spiritual podcast. My background is uh, growing up uh, within Christianity and then my mom went to a Unitarian church. She's always been like super hippie, all the things. A little bit about me. Uh, I did sing Colors of the Wind from Pocahontas when I was eight years old on Earth Day at my mom's Unitarian Church. So if you're wondering why I am the way I am, that's just a fun piece of information for you. And then I was also baptized at my father's church when I was 12 years old. So if you're wondering how someone can be so multifaceted and dynamic, that's why. So I hope next time you hear uh, Colors of the Wind, you think of me. I... uh, so I like to, I do, I think that sometimes we sell ourselves short because we we shut ourselves off from other tools. Like if you grew up at all in a Christian home, right, everything that wasn't Jesus or the Bible was of the devil, which nobody's working harder than that man. I mean, wow. I mean, now if I look at it, I'm like the amount of things that they're like, that's where the devil lives. I'm like, this man is everywhere. He doesn't sleep. I'm like, he was in everything, teen magazines, you know, uh, Dawson's Creek. Like, this man was working overtime. So, frankly, you know, give him that. You know, he's really wanting to bring you to the dark side. So, a lot of things that I now identify as tools, you know, uh, like eclipses and phases of the moon and astrology, and yoga, and meditation, uh, and sometimes crystals, uh, not because I think they're going to change my life, but they are cute, you know what I mean? Just pretty rocks. Um, Are all of these things that can be different tools for us, and I think even if you're, you know, a spiritual healer, there's going to be, where like all of this is totally up your alley, there are going to be some modalities and tools that work for you, and others that you're like, I'm not really attracted to it. So I always say that's The best thing that as the leader of this ship I can do for you is offer you a lot of different tools, 
and then also kind of share about which ones really I identify with, which ones are super helpful for me, because I think so often we just shut ourselves off from staying open to ways that we can stay on this personal development journey, learn more about ourselves, or even if you're somebody that rolls your eyes at like self-help, I'm like, don't you just like want to be like a kinder person? You know, like even if just like mindsets and like manifestation, you know, hashtag goals, like all of that culture makes you sick to your stomach. Like, first of all, you and I are simpatico because I could not feel the same. Could not not feel the same more. Don't forget, I'm on like four hours of sleep. Okay, she nailed it. So that is a little bit of what we're going to talk about today are some of these uh, modalities and tools and then specifically within eclipse season and kind of what this means in like the most layman's terms. So if you're somebody who teaches about eclipse, uh, eclipses, specifically the ones that are in transition right now, you're going to be frustrated. I'm just going to tell you that right now. You're going to hear this and be like, she she doesn't know what she's talking about. Uh, And that's because this podcast is not about learning about eclipse season. It just may put into frame for you maybe some of the transitions and things that you're feeling, right? Which is also why people that are like, uh, you know, and again, I spent a long time in LA. So, so many people that it's just like, oh my, I totally knew that you were a Virgo. It's like, okay, can I just order my Starbucks? You know what I mean? Like it's every interaction doesn't have to be like, oh my God, I totally knew that about you, you know? And it's like, I just want to get my license here. Is that a thing that you guys do? So I understand that. But the great thing about the Zodiac is when you really even like have a cursory cursory knowledge it helps you kind of see this natural ebb and flow of seasons of speeds of how things are moving and my biggest if this were an essay that I were writing and it's like what's your thesis statement right oh do you remember those yikes that like gives me anxiety to think about Uh, Some of you are probably writing a dissertation right now and being like, yeah, grad school is awful, Um, but also good for you for expanding your mind. A thesis statement about all of my work in general and specifically this podcast, the thesis statement is wanting to create a more conscious society through not taking ourselves so seriously. There, uh, the amount of just folks with just going back to the doctor thing, just a just an MD, they got their doctorate and just taking shit so seriously. I'm like, no wonder we're all miserable. That is not to say, as I sit here with many privileges in my life, of that these things that are affecting people significantly, we absolutely should be taking these things seriously. But we're going to burn out because everything becomes so serious and everything becomes about, well, this is my identity. And if you don't understand it, then you just don't care about anybody. And it's like, okay, I just met you, you know? So that, that's what I mean when I say wanting us to find the humor and the, the human experience to find the silliness, to find the space between what we should be fighting for and what is just everything else. Because that space is where we get to have fun. That space is what I want this podcast to be about. So it is about growth and tools. And I really mean it when I say that it's like, I want everybody to be the best version of themselves. Or fuck best. Like just in pursuit of finding something that you feel fulfilled with. What does best even mean? You know, it's like, I want to be my best self. And it's like, okay, okay. What about like your favorite self? What about the part of you that feels fulfilled? What about the part of you that feels good despite shit not being great all of the time? And for me, that's about consciousness. That is about bringing us to a place where it's like, why are you making the decisions that you're making? Because it's it's not, you know, sometimes I feel like with healing and with mindset and transformational coaches and all of this, it's like, Well, now if it just becomes another thing that we're doing, how exhausting. 
And then is it even, then I would argue it's like, then are you even conscious? Then if it just becomes another thing, to me, that's just another version of counting calories. It just becomes another version of, I have to control this so that I know what the outcome is. And people do that all the time. We need a term for it, you know, where it's like there's the, and I don't say this of meaning to make uh, light of eating disorders by any means, but, you know, it's like once we develop the terminology for like orthorexia, which is if you're not familiar, that's really when at the forefront, it's like, oh no, I'm really into wellness and fitness, but it's still very much about control and a lot of it is under eating that's framed as, you know, oh, I only eat this thing or this thing or this thing. And we do that within our, we have people doing that in spirituality all the time. Oh, well, I can't engage with this thing because it goes against this thing. And I only hang out with these people because they represent this thing. And, you know, I have to meditate four times a day and then I do this and I do that. It's like once it becomes so about constriction, you're not engaging with what is spiritual. I talk about Remington Donovan on, the, on this podcast all the time because due to his work is one of the many reasons why I'm here doing this work. And one of Remington's teachings is if it's not practical, it's not spiritual. Give me some snaps for that one, baby. Give me some snaps. Let me hear them. Let me hear them loud and clear. That, that I mean, again, talk about this thesis statement. It's like, to me, that, that's what it is. How can we get you to a place where you were living practically, you were living presently, and hopefully in pursuit of, of, sure, transforming your life in a way that you see fit. But some of the happiest people I know live the most simple lives. I am, I am honestly, and I, I mean this without any condescension, I am most envious of my friends that are like, yeah, we're good. I'm like, how's your job? And they're successful in their own right, but they're like, yeah, it's good. How are the kids? Yeah, we're good. They take one or two vacations a year, you know, spend a little money here and there, but like, they're okay. That sense of fulfillment and contentment, that's what I want us all to feel. Everybody doesn't have to be out here, but you know, again, it's this, so much of what has created this sense of separation, and I think that's gone into this sense of t- taking everything over seriously, has come from this hyper-individuality. And... A lot of that has come from oppression and when things are oppressed for too long, right? What do we do? If, if all of a sudden we're going to bounce out, we're going to go the other way. That's just natural. That's human nature, right? For instance, when I was in college, uh, the first love of my life, very sadly, ended up having a very uh, strong addiction and uh, we ended up getting him into rehab. Happy to report now he's wildly successful and handsome and doing wonderful and uh, is, is sober as a judge. So that's great. Uh, but I went from that circumstance to dating a Chicago police officer, okay? That's what they call the swing. So I went from somebody who's shooting heroin all the way over to a, a Chicago police officer, all right? So, and then I found my way in the middle, which was a comedian. So that that was fun for everybody. Um, and not... My husband now, this was a different comedian that I dated many, many moons ago. Uh, But that's what we're doing in society, right? Oh, everybody says we can't do this thing, so now we're going to, everybody's got to be all the way over here, and if you're not all the way over here, then you don't care, and you don't care about progress, and yada, 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 and wake up, wake up, you're all sheeple. And the reality, it's probably somewhere a little bit here. I don't think all the way in the middle, because some of y'all all the way over here. (laughs) You're losing your minds, okay? Uh, My folks far right? Don't know what we're doing, okay? Uh, Talk about the devil because he's working a lot with y'all out here preaching about God. So uh, you might want to check your resources. But it's not all or nothing. And so a lot of this has come out of that hyper-individuality. And I do think it's beautiful of know who you are and shine bright and all of those things, right? But when you become so fixated on like what your identity is. Like I was talking about this. I was like, everybody is so focused on what their identity is yet. Nobody knows who the fuck they actually are. They know their pronouns. They know what, uh, marches they're going to. They know what they're canceling, what they're banning, what they're, you know, all these things. And yet I feel like I would, some of these people on the internet and that nothing behind those eyes, just nothing on both quote unquote sides even us here in the middle. And so 
that's what my work is in pursuit of doing is is kind of like a percolator, right? What like let's all right. Okay. Come on. Uh, 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 uh. Let's wake up. Wake up. Just a little bit, okay? Come on back. Everybody come on back to the middle, okay? Everybody come on back. We <laughs> we need to have a chat, okay? It's gotten a little weird in these streets, okay? What are we doing? So a lot of that I think happens through community. I think a lot of that happens through lack of judgment. And I understand how difficult that is because of the things that are being banned, the people whose uh, lives are at stake all of the time, the fears that we all have. So these things are very real and are really above my pay grade to even speak about in a way that is educational or even insightful. But we get to that place from us individually. So how can you stay open to wanting to get to the other side of the things that maybe you're working through right now, which takes us back to how I opened the podcast of how you found me and why you're here. So we're in this eclipse season and eclipses are always time of great change and there's always like a, again, like an eclipse season, sometimes uh, they will mirror each other by three months, six months, uh, and we have different eclipse cycles every year. So we just had one on April 19th, and I think the next one is May 5th, and that closes out a six-month journey or cycle. And even if you look back to May of last year and kind of where you, where you were, the themes and things that you were working on, and you'll kind of see like what was that journey of this year for you. And a lot of what has been going on energetically is all about springing, uh look at that pun, springing up these new beginnings. And my guess is if you're here, if you're listening to this, if you've found me, it's because you are in this place of, I've talked about this before, of like the tabula rasa, the clean slate that you're starting anew. And often when we're doing that, when we're in this in-between, like in this in-between in this eclipse season, we're in between who we used to be and who we want to be. So it's almost like, you know, when you're on Instagram and they're like, oh, we just up, we just updated all these things. And then the app starts glitching a bunch. And then they like get that one guy, Mosier or whatever his name is. And then he's like, oh, so as you know, we've been updating stuff. You know what I mean? That guy. And they uh, talk about everything that they've been updating on the app and so why it's glitching. And then after, you know, a couple of updates, then it's, it's working. That's what's happening to you spiritually, physically, mentally, and energetically is you kind of glitch, right? You'll be faced with uh, or offered the opportunity of something that perhaps the past version of you or the version of you that you're wanting to work past. So you want to develop new ways of responding to the world, to stimuli, to other people, to yourself, to create new patterns that are in better service of yourself. But sometimes we have to exercise that muscle enough to where we've updated that software enough that it just does it, right? So we're in this in-between and And beginnings are difficult because oftentimes it's hard. (laughs) That's the other thing that just annoys the shit out of me uh, with all things like wellness and mental health and, you know, this like candy version of it, you know, like look at all just my monochromatic posts, you know, hi, like just all that bullshit where I'm like, nobody is talking about the absolute brutality that it is some days to create new patterns. This shit is not easy. That's why a lot of people don't do the things that they actually want to do because it's not easy. So if you're in this place where it's like, Rachel, everything feels uncomfortable, you know, like 
The amount of messages I've gotten in the last week of people that have left long-term relationships, left long-term jobs, you know, are, are stepping out and doing these things. And they're like, I'm so uncomfortable. I'm so scared that I made a terrible choice. And I'm not going to say I can guarantee you that you didn't. Most of you probably have made a phenomenal choice, but you know, don't come back uh, and be like, well, Rachel said it was a phenomenal choice and turns out it was not. Uh, but yeah, I mean, all seriousness, like when you're making those choices and my guess is any of you that chose to leave those things that were long-term, this wasn't like a random choice. This is the thing that you've been thinking about and sweating and it's kept you up at night and just, you know, destroyed your nervous system and you've been scared, you've been scared and you finally did it. So that's a terrifying place to be in. I don't say that to scare you, but hopefully to create some camaraderie of like, if you're feeling lost at sea, that's an appropriate way to feel. <laughs> because all of this talk and jargon from these transformational coaches and all these people and how they're just going to change your life. And it's like, it's not filters and, you know, like lifestyle blogging. That's not, that's not what this journey is going to be like for you. <laughs> Now, that's also not to say that it's all terrible. It's, or none of it is terrible. Let me rephrase. None of it is terrible, but meaning that it's not going to be painful because you're pushing yourself past places that you've been before. You know, I mean, it's the same thing if like the Trader Joe's that you always go to and you know where everything is in the aisle and then you're, you're still going to go to Trader Joe's, but you're going to go to a different Trader Joe's. But you're like, well, I don't, this aisle isn't like this at my Trader Joe's. And you're going to have to kind of relearn where everything is. That's metaphorically what you're doing. How does she do it? You know what I mean? Oh, geez. So that's what you're doing. Give yourself time. So that's what I want to offer you is with an actual action step tool that you can take with you. And I would like to credit little John. And some of you may going, little John, like that little John? Yes. Three six nine. That little John, little John on the East Side boys, little two thousand and two hit known as Get Low. I would play it right now in the podcast, but then it would get flagged on Spotify and YouTube, so I can't. But it would, for comedic relief, it would be better if it came in right now. So just imagine that, okay? That's your only homework for today. When you get done listening to this, you got to go and listen to Get Low by Little John and the East Side Boys, because again, we're not taking ourselves too seriously here, okay? Here's what I want to offer you: three six nine. Three months, six months, nine months, okay? We're going into this eclipse season and we're almost on the other side of it. May 5th is the last one. I think it's a a lunar eclipse in Scorpio, I think. Well, I don't know. I'll put it in the show notes if that's not correct. Um, But anyway, shit's getting shaken up, okay? Um, And... So you have this opportunity of going into this new beginning and you're probably finding your footing. I want to offer you this too. Uh, me too. Okay. So with this 369 that I'm offering you, it's because this is a tool that I'm going to be utilizing in my life. All right. I, uh, my work is picking up more and more of you are showing up. I'm having more and more opportunities to collab and work with different people, more downloads on the podcast. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, the way in which I've been working, I, I got to get to a new level of workflow. I have to get to a new level of discipline and not in a way that's exhaustion or over, you know, cause I know a lot of people are like, but Rachel, you have a newborn, like pace yourself. Yes. That's exactly why I need to do this. How can I create a better workflow for myself and say super disciplined y'all shocker. I am wildly neurodivergent. Speaking of hyper individuality. Okay. ADD, ADD, uh, ADHD, probably undiagnosed, uh, dyslexia. Okay, I'm a hypersensitive person. My, it's like everything is distracting for me, okay? So I have to figure out all of these things for myself. Even this morning, it was like, I didn't get any sleep with my son. And I'm like, well, it's fine. You know, we're just getting started. I guess I, you know, I can take a nap. But like, you know, our team will be fine if I have to. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're going to sleep later. This is what, this is the, this is day one of doing this new thing. And you're going to get on a microphone and tell people that, that they need to do things that are uncomfortable and you're going to go back and take a nap, you can push through. You can take a nap after this, okay? So three, six, nine, here we go. Three months, six months, nine months. If you are trying something new and it feels difficult and all those old voices start coming up, are you sure you don't want to call them back? You should call them back. You know what I mean? Let's just blow this up. You don't need to move on. Give them a call. 
right? All those other fears. Oh, you thought you were going to start your own business? <laughs> You're an idiot. No one's going to want to do this business with you, right? All those voices that start popping up. Oh, you think you want to get in control of, of your drinking? Hilarious. Should open up another high life. It's a champagne of beers, okay? Grab a couple. All of these old voices that want to just, you know, start just in your ear, right? Those do not go away. Those will never go away. You will always have the opportunity at any point to, as I define it, blow your life the fuck up, right? Meaning I have, at this point, the life that I've been working towards for many, many years. And at any point I could go, ah, fuck it, I'd actually just rather drink and have sex with strangers, so I'm going to leave all of this, right? We could all do that. We could decide at any point that we want to blow everything up and do it a different way. And so I think sometimes when we're starting something new, because it's so new, those voices are so much more familiar, even if toxic and even if we hate them, that's what we know because we don't have new voices yet. We don't have any evidence that these new things that we're wanting to do will support us. So you can't give up until you don't have any evidence. That's insane. You haven't even started yet. So if we do 369, it's going to, little drone on the east side, boys. It's going to get you to the other side. And here's what I mean. Those voices start coming up and, and you don't really know what to do. You can just simply go, hey guys, thanks so much. I appreciate you being here. I want to let you know I'm trying something new for three months. So at the end of three months, you can come back. And I want you to let you know that old versions of you, your ego, these voices, however you define it for yourself, uh, when you start to step out of your comfort zone, when you start to do something else, nobody works harder than the devil side of you, okay? Nobody works harder and will come at you in every way possible to get you to stay safe. But I want to let you know you are not safe. Again, going to that idea of like the devil is everywhere, right? Like that negative energy, that low vibration, that wanting to keep you small is everywhere. And it's going to pop up and pop up and pop up faster and faster and faster the closer you get to that three months. And I want you to hold on. I want you to think about me. I want you to think about the other people that are listening to this and knowing that you're not alone. That there's over, you know, now what, 100,000 people that are listening to this and all those other people. If you can't do it for you, do it for them because they're out there trying to do it for you, right? The more conscious we all get, the more fulfilled we all get, it's going to be a happier place. We're not going to take ourselves so seriously. We're going to be able to like tackle a lot of these major, major things that are happening in our collective better together. So for the next three months, anytime those voices come to visit, ah, thanks so much. Hey, I'm doing this thing for three months. Check back in. And here's why. Here's why it's effective. Because I guarantee you, this is when the guarantee comes in. I guarantee you that at the end of three months, you are going to have enough evidence that it's working, that choosing you, choosing your evolution, choosing your healing, whatever you most identify with is working. Great. So now we're going to do three more months. We're going on to six months. So they're always three month increments. You can do that, right? So those voices come back. Hey girl, it's the end of three months. I don't know if like, maybe you just want to have some of this Chianti with me, okay? Hey man, thanks so much for showing up. I'm actually, I'm going six months. So I'm going to do three more. If you want to come back in three more, we can have a conversation, right? And then you will be shocked how quickly you're going to get to six months. And then again, same thing. We're going to nine months. Check back in again in three months. I guarantee you, that from now to nine months from now, because I didn't do the math, I don't know. I tell jokes, I don't do math, okay? Nine months from now, you are gonna have so much evidence and you will have built so many new patterns for yourself, you will be out of glitch mode. You have now created new patterns for yourself, a new way of being, a new way of showing up in your life, in dating, in your relationships, in your family, as a mother, as a teacher, whatever it is that you're going through. You are going to show up so differently that other people are going to be reacting differently to you. So it's that same thing. Little John on the East Side Boys, 369. That's what we're going to do, okay? So whether you're big on eclipses, you're hearing about them for the first time, 
wherever you are, knowing that they are a tool, knowing that we have been going through this process of, again, so in um, the Zodiac, we were just in Aries season, which is all about, it's a fire sign. It's trial by fire. It's a, it creates a lot of manic energy. It's And it makes sense that it's spring. It's the first time like days are getting longer and things are blooming and like winter's dying off. And it's this this huge just kind of surge of energy. And now we've walked into Taurus season, which is an earth sign, which makes sense why earth day is during uh, Taurus season. But, you know, and so it's what, how can you take everything, all of those like, all right, I bit the bullet, LaForce, I did it. I, I broke up with that. I, I called off my engagement. I, I, I told my boss I wanted more money and he told me to walk and I said, that's fine. And now I'm looking for a new job or so whatever it is that you had that oomph that came out of Taurus season. And now again, you're in that in-between, you're in that glitch and it's like, what the fuck is gonna happen, right? So now we have this opportunity to ground these things and this, this Taurus season, this thing you can take and integrate and make these things solid for yourself. And then we're going to keep going, we're going to keep going, and we're going to keep going. So I, um, I've i been pulling more uh, cards, oracle cards. So this is another great uh, tool. Again, oh my gosh. I mean, the amount of people I know that would be like, that's the devil's work. That's one way of looking at it. Uh, I think, again, um, I, I call it God. <laughs> I think God speaks to us in, in all sorts of ways. Your creator, your higher power. I like the word creator. I like the word universe. Those are uh, ones that really speak to me. It, it reminds me of how big everything is. Also, the word God for me has um, unfortunately been very tainted in a lot of ways. But again, when I, when I say universe or creator, God, higher power, however you identify, right? The thing that is greater than us. And uh, so I wanted to pull a card for us to kind of, you know, just kind of see where we're at. And shocker, I got something so applicable that I was just like, God is a comedian. There's no way that I could ever compete with how hilarious the universe truly is, okay? So this card, you can't see it very well, but this is the seed. This is the card, the seed, So it says, the seed, the beginning, the origin, the pearl. Beginnings come in many forms. They're not always a beautiful seed placed intentionally in nourishing soil. Origin stories, like any birth story, are complex, surprising, multi-layered, and usually reveal a central image or detail that represents the fully formed being. Simply stated, the end is present in the beginning. Oof. Oh, 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 snap them fingers and pull over. That's so good. The end is present in the beginning or the entire oak tree resides within the acorn. Whether you follow this theory or not, know that when this card appears, there is potent generative energy all around. There is potent uh, generative, yeah, energy (laughs) all around. It stirs your very insides and usually results in an antsy, impatient feeling, right? Again, it's that energy of, oh, what do I do with this now? I don't know what I'm doing. Pay particular attention to what it is that agitates you as it is a sure sign of the growth to come. You are bumping up against a growth edge. It is from the grit that the pearl eventually comes to be. Again, I'm just going to give you a Rachel Force guarantee. I did not purposely pick this card. I did not know this is in here, okay? So, y'all, Jesus lives, okay? The seed. Uh, and it also says, one of the alchemist's favorite images was the pearl. Over time, it becomes the treasure. And what is your grit? What is your grit? This also says uh, that when we're utilizing the seed or the beginning, when it's light, It's fertile, it's germinating, and it's building. When we use the dark side of it, it's festering, it's stewing, it's dormant, right? That's that old, why am I feeling this way? And then the last thing that this says is, the true seed is elusive. If we follow any story towards its origin, it spirals further and further and further and further back in time. In this way, we are always the seed and always the fruit that it bears which 
my interpretation of that is also where it's like we are ever evolving. So while this beginning, wherever you are in it, is potent and beautiful and is the seed of what is next to come for you, trust it, trust it, trust it, right? That's why pearl necklaces are so, you know, it's like some people have them in their family and they're passed down and, you know, they've always been seen as as luxury. So it's like if you're imagining your growth as this pearl, you want to protect it, you want to take care of it right? So if you're a visual learner, if that's something that works for you when, when you're getting overwhelmed or it's this or it's that, it's like, can you just imagine holding that pearl? This is something you can take care of. This is something that you can do. You got this, right? And that is all that I have for you. I am so grateful that you're here. I just really want you to hear that. I I was thinking about this recently as I've kind of come to this other side and for myself and what this new beginning is. And I realized on the first of the eclipse, which was April 19th, that there were three different creators and teachers that helped me get here. They don't know this, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've maybe told them here or there, oh, hey, I liked your stuff or this or that. Two of them, or three of them actually a podcast, but two of them are teachers and they, they work in this space in different ways. And I realized not only are these people my friends now, But the messages, I received three different messages from them that were so lovely. And I'm not saying this of like, listen to this brag, but just again, this 369, this was the evidence for me where I was like, oh my gosh, these are the people that I was listening to, that I was sticking with, that I really wanted to learn from. And now here on the other side, many, many years later, and here they are being like, hey, I saw that video. I love that. Like, thanks so much for speaking up for this thing. And I was like, holy shit. (laughs) <laughs> like, no, these people know who I am. Like, I'm friends with these people. This is awesome. So, you know, just allow me to nerd out and be lame for a minute, but I just wanted to share that with you, that the evidence is there. And I'm also in this new beginning with you. So again, when you're going through and, and you have this 369, if you can't do it for you, can you do it for somebody else that's listening? Can you do it for me? Can you show up for the version of you that will be on the other side? If you guys like this podcast, please share it with a friend, post it on social media that you have no idea how helpful this is. If you guys are YouTubers, even if you're not, YouTube's free, you know, you've been there. Uh, Please go and subscribe to our page. It's not super great yet, and be perfectly honest, we're uh, late to the game with the YouTubes, but it's going to be awesome. We're going to be doing YouTube lives there. I'm going to be sharing all sorts of different content. I'm going to be collaborating with people, so go ahead, uh, be an OG, get in there now, uh, because because there's nothing more fun than uh, being able to like watch something evolve. We're going to be doing a lot of community-based stuff through YouTube as well. Uh, so even if you're like, well, I follow you on Instagram, I don't need to follow you on YouTube. Again, you don't even have to check it just for me. It's free and you have no idea the support that it makes me feel. So go and like, subscribe, all that good stuff. So again, that's my YouTube. Uh, Also on Spotify, you can subscribe to the podcast, which means that you can offer as little as a dollar, as much to, I think it's $12.99 or something like that, towards the podcast every month if you want to support this podcast. There's no pressure. I know we're all out there uh, doing the best, but if you're like, I got an extra two bucks a month, why not? I would love your $2. I'm not above asking for it, okay? Uh, You can go there, you can subscribe and give me two bucks a month uh, to keep all of this good stuff going. I would appreciate it. Uh, We're not gonna be focused on doing a Patreon or anything like that. I really wanna make sure I'm bringing you the most content in all of the places uh, for now. Uh, that are free, you guys can subscribe and all that good stuff. So uh, check all of those things out. I have a bunch of new things that are dropping in May. Oh my gosh, can I tell you? It's gonna be so fun, okay? Last week we talked about April showers bring May flowers. Mama is bringing like the whole field of flowers to you for the month of May. You're welcome, okay? Uh, The buy-in for that, you can either follow along on my Instagram for completely free. I got a couple little things you can buy in for. Literally cheaper than avocado toast. You're welcome. And uh, so even if you're balling on a budget, because I know what that feels like. And especially when I started this journey, I did not have any money. So having, you know, being able to invest in a couple of these things that are investing in yourself and is something you can still do. I really want to make sure it's accessible to everybody. Uh, So please check all this stuff out. There's even more. I'm going to put it all in the comments. I'm hyped. I'm excited. I cannot tell you again. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Friends, 
This has been the Rachel LaForce Show because uh, I'm Rachel LaForce and this is my show. Tune out, tune in, love you, mean it. Time for-